Hi, I'm Elizabeth Adams. I'm the Early Childhood Specialist at Habitat Grace Elementary, and tonight we're going to be talking about the importance of writing in our youngest um, students and community members. And so I hope today that you walk away with lots of different ideas that you can use to help your child um, even before they get to school age in the area of writing. So as I think about why we're here tonight, we have a couple of goals. We want to understand how fine motor activities develop our writers. We want to understand the progression of the writing stages, and hopefully you're going to walk away with some new activities that are going to help to develop those fine motor skills as well as writing skills in your child. So as I think about writing in early childhood, we really want to build those writing skills in lots of ways. And children do this through drawing, through painting, cutting, and gluing. And all of these activities, as well as other fine motor activities, help to build this strength in their hands and help to develop those fine motor skills needed when it comes time to hold pencils and pens um, when they get to the school age. And so when we talk about fine motor, we're talking about all those small muscles in our children's hands. But we're also talking about building those muscles in our hands in conjunction with that eye-hand coordination. So being able to isolate our fingers the way we need to, to move from using our whole hand to grab things, to really using that index finger and thumb. And so the goal of fine motor is to strengthen those muscles to be able to really be able to grab things precisely using that um, pinching movement. So as we think about the grasp that we see um, in children when it comes to writing utensils, we're gonna start with the cylindrical grasp. A lot of kids, when they are one, one and a half, when they're first starting to color in things, they'll grab that pencil, they'll grab that crayon, they'll grab that writing tool with their whole hand and fist and they'll go to town writing, which is great. That's very the first way they start. But we might wanna see how that progresses and how the grasp becomes more adult-like. So around two or three years old, we're gonna to wanna to start to see them kind of move to that digital grasp where now their hand is kind of turned around, their fingers are pointing in the direction of the utensil, but they don't quite have that tripod grip. By three and a half and four years old, we're gonna to start to see that they're not gonna be using their whole, all their fingers, they might be using three or four of them and it's gonna look more like a tripod on the pencil. Until eventually around four and a half through seven, we're really working on that proper placement of the three fingers, onto our pencil or our pen to be able to really have control and movement as we begin writing. Now, in order to do that, we need to build those fine motor muscles like I was talking about earlier. And so we're gonna do that through lots of different fine motor activities. And we do lots of different activities um, when students reach school age, in the pre-K classroom, in our kindergarten classrooms. And so I wanted to share with you today some of those things that we can do to strengthen those fine motor muscles in our children at home. One activity that they love to do is the Fruit Loop sort. So we can have lots of Fruit Loops on a tray in a bowl, and then you need a paper plate, and you will place spaghetti noodles straight down a paper plate. And as they're sorting by color, they're gonna need to pick up one Fruit Loop using that index finger and thumb, and string it on to the column that matches that color. Again, it's that ability to pick it up with just the two fingers, not using the whole hand, and then having that eye-hand coordination to be able to slide it onto the noodle. Another really easy activity that you can do at home is the tong transfer. And you can use egg cartons, you can use ice cube trays, and what they can do is using a pair of kitchen tongs, or you can get dollar store ones, um, you can find small kid ones, and some sort of cereal or small object. It could be marshmallows, it could be Cheerios. You can number the different cups in your ice cream tray or on your egg carton. And your child would then take the tongs and they would need to be able to pinch the tong to pick something up and place the correct number into the matching bin. Again, it's getting them to use all of the muscles in their hands to eventually get them to that tripod grasp that we're gonna need when writing. So as I think about other materials that are around our house, there's lots of things that we can use to create these fun, fine motor games and activities that kids don't even realize that they are working on this building muscles. They really think they're just playing, which is great. The more play-based it can be, the more engaged they're going to be. So as I look at some things here that I find around my house, things like pipe cleaners and cotton balls, stickers, marshmallows, toothpicks, clothes pins, rubber bands, 
I'm thinking about how could I use these things to create a fine motor experience for my child. One of the favorites in my house is always um, toothpicks and marshmallows or toothpicks and pipe cleaners with marshmallows. And they can build structure. So by having to take a marshmallow with that pinch and sticking it into the toothpick and then creating structures with them, again, things we find around the house. Other things that we like to do, we like to take kitchen tongs, like I mentioned earlier, and transfer things from one bin to another. Also taking pasta and pipe cleaners. And I like to use either like penne pasta that they can take the pasta and they can string the pasta onto the pipe cleaners and then turn it into a bracelet. So there's lots of things around our house that we can use that cost very little for us to really help our kids engage in a play-based activity but that's going to develop those muscles in their hands that are going to help them for later with writing. And so once we've developed the muscles, the goal is then to use those muscles to progress through the stages of writing. And so as you can see here, that children are gonna move through a variety of stages. And we want them to know that writing has a purpose and can communicate meaning. We also know that through writing, we want children to be able to form letters and words properly. And we want them to be able to write words and sentences eventually to convey meaning. So in the beginning, students are going, or kids are going to be doing drawings. They're gonna draw anything. It could look like scribbles. It can look like something that we don't know. And often we can just say to our kids, hey, tell me about your picture. And their picture might be a farm, even though we can't see that. Their picture might be them playing at the playground with a friend, even though we may not realize that. And so by asking that question of, just tell me about your picture, they're being able to show and communicate that the scribbles that they've created actually is then starting in that drawing stage of writing. Then, as we start to move away from that drawing stage, we'll go to that scribbling stage. So often you'll see, you know, one and two year olds, they're just taking pens and they're scribbling and they're gonna say, you know, it says, hi, daddy, or it says, dog. Um, but again, that's getting them to understand that writing has a purpose. Once they get through the scribbling stage, they're going to go into more of those wavy scribbles. And when we get to the wavy scribbles, they will then start to tell us even longer messages. After the scribbles, we get to letter-like form. So we start to see things that aren't traditional letters that we use but they're starting to have straight lines to them. They're starting to have curves to them. They're starting to have slants to them. And all of these types of lines are gonna be used when they start to actually form true letters in their writing. Now we want them to move on to letter strings. So kids will start to learn their letters and now they're gonna put strings of letters together. And the strings of letters won't necessarily spell anything. And when we say, tell me what your writing says, they'll be able to communicate often to us what they wanted it to say. Again, they're understanding that writing has purpose and communicates meaning, even though the meaning that they're conveying right now isn't understandable perhaps to an adult. Then after they've kind of experienced with letter strings, we start to get to more to that transitional writing and we get to inventive spelling and phonetic spelling before we get to our traditional way of spelling things. And when we look at inventive and phonetic spelling, you might see that there's one or two letters in a word that are there, like I like the dog, and there might just be a G, a D, and a G. Um, but again, we want students to be able to move through these writing stages, starting even at that young age of one, giving them opportunities to build their fine motor muscles, as well as give them that opportunity to just hold utensils in their hands, whether it be a crayon or a pencil or a marker, and get them to start to try to communicate meaning through their writing. Once our children start to have better control of their fine motor muscles and they start to see that, you know, the letters that I know are going to communicate meaning because those letters go together to make words, that's when we can now transition from some of our fine motor activities to more writing based activities. And with these writing based activities, we can look at having children practice just writing letters, practice writing numbers. It doesn't have to be um, whole words. And a lot of these, again, are things that you might find around your house. So you can create like a sand or a salt tray. So you can just take like a cookie sheet, fill it with sand, and they can use their finger to write letters in the sand. They could use a Q-tip, they could use paintbrushes, lots of things as their tool. You can do the same thing with rice. 
you can pour rice into a tray and have student your sorry your children not your students have your children write different letters even just practice making circles making straight lines making horizontal lines making slanted lines all of these are going to be helpful when they're writing letters we also use what we call gel bags um, take a ziploc baggie and you can fill it with either a little bit of paint or hair gel and you can add food coloring if you want then you seal it up and then you can use a q-tip and have them draw the letters or write a word or copy a word or practice their name um, through the bag and then when you're done they just clear it they can trace so put a letter put letters put numbers on a piece of paper and have them use a q-tip and paint to just trace over what you've already created and then shaving cream on trays is always a favorite so you can either put shaving cream like right on your kitchen counter or you can put it on a cookie sheet and have them write the letters right into the tray same thing for bath time you could put shaving cream or bath paints on the wall and then have them write into them with different letters different numbers shapes and types of lines and so what we have found is that once students have developed their fine motor ability and they've started to engage in writing activities to get them to practice writing letters and words and numbers that really is going to get them into some authentic writing opportunities because research on early writing instruction suggests that experimenting with composing in an authentic situation really helps kids with their knowledge of the alphabet, with their knowledge of print awareness, which really relates to understanding how books work that we read from left to right, and also their phonological awareness skills. So getting them to understand that letters have sounds, we put those sounds together to make words. So some of those authentic writing opportunities that really are going to show um, an increase in early literacy skills that they're going to need when they enter school at pre-K and kindergarten are things like writing letters to neighbors or family members and putting them in the mail and that can be done with the help of an adult at home also having them tell stories retelling and they can start with just drawing pictures of what happened today which today we went to the park well can you draw a picture of everything we did at the park and now let's label the things in our pictures um, another great authentic writing opportunity for our kids is lists so if you're making a grocery list maybe they can draw three things you need at the grocery and then you can help them to label those with words as well as any other messages if there's a celebration if it's someone's birthday or it's a holiday that they can send a message to that people so these are all authentic writing opportunities that are really going to help our kids to increase the early literacy skills and it's going to show later success in reading and writing um, as they get to school and so i wanted to share with you just a few examples of what the writing may look like as it progresses just like we know that the grasp was pro progressing on how we're holding our writing utensil and we know that there's a progression from just drawings to scribbling to letter strands to um, traditional spelling here are some of those examples so in the first example this is a letter that was written with just wavy scribbles and when the child was asked well what does your letter say tell me about it they said dear daddy i love you and i'll see you again if we hadn't asked the student we wouldn't know what that says but they understand that if i write something on here i can communicate meaning and they told us that meaning in the second one this is using letter like forms and strings of letters and they said that this one says two secret spies so to us we can see that there's you know looks like maybe four letter like forms there and that is what the child was communicating as we progress though in this next picture we see um, it's actually a bumblebee and we can see that there are an m and a b and a b so you have that m sound in bumble and then that bull b um, so you can see why there's two b's there so again now this child is starting to work towards that inventive spelling and putting the accurate letters to match um, the sounds that they hear until eventually we want to have phonetic spelling where we're seeing a lot more sounds and we're seeing some words spelled correctly. So this last one says, I went outside, I played Frisbee. So while everything is not spelled correctly, there's a lot more sound association there and they've really moved through those levels of writing. Okay. 
And so I hope that tonight you've been able to hear a variety of ways that you can do activities at home to first develop those fine motor muscles in your child's hands to help them progress through the different stages of writing um, all the way from scribbles to our phonetic spelling that we like to see um, by the end of kindergarten. And so this session as well as other sessions will be available to you um, at hcps.org. If you navigate to the parent tab and to um, the early childhood resources, you will find resources about community and family, mental health and education. And if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out.